Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do another Lee Cook question, interval list intersections. And this is an awesome question, and this question reminds me of the meeting rooms question in Lee Cook. So let me know down below if you want me to do a video about that as well, but um, the theme of these types of questions are to check if you understand how to calculate intervals in um, given arrays, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, awesome, let's get started. Great, so for this question, we're given two arrays in sorted order, and the order of this arrays is that this is the, the first element here is the start time. So this is the start, and the second element here is the end time. Right, so this is the case for all the items in the array um, for both A and B. Now, what we need to find is um, the interval. And there are a few things that we need to notice here to understand what is meant by an interval here. Right, so we are already given this in a sorted array. So what I've done here is I have uh, mapped out the interval for A and the interval for B. Great, so first let's see how we check for an interval given um, our start and end points for one case. So what I've done here is I've taken um, this first item in A and the first item in B and I've mapped them over here. So we can see that A's start is at zero, okay, and we can see that A's end is at two. So this is zero and this is two, right? And we can see that B's start is at one, and B's end is at 5. So what we're looking for is this intersection here, right? So that's how we find one interval. And how do we compute this? How do we, what do we tell the machine to do to get us this, this result? So what we need to check is we need to first find out is, is B start um, less than A's end? So B start is one and A's end is two. So we are checking if B lies within that framework, right? So if this is this is our case, then yes, we do have a, a intersection here. And the other thing we need to check is if A start is less than B's end. So here you see zero and five. Um, so we're comparing zero to five. And we need to check, hey, does this start before the B ends? And if yes, then yeah, there's a possibility of our intersection happening in the between. So let's look at this these numbers again and validate what we just learned. So I need to see if my start is less than this end, B's end, right? So if we put this in a linear scale, that means yeah, there, inter there's an intersection that exists between zero and five because there are um, numbers that are less than that since our array is sorted, right? So, okay, so that is the first condition. That is the first thing we need to check. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I do have an intersection. And what is the next condition I need to check? The next condition I need to check is if this B start is less than A's end. So these are the two things we need to check. So we can see that B start is one here and A's end is um, two here. So this is all we are going to get from this. So stay with me here. I know it looks like a little bit strange at first, but once you do these kind of problems, um, this is in most cases for intervals, that's what we're checking. We're either given a sorted input or we're given an unsorted input and we need to sort it and then do exactly this. So we will check our overlaps by taking the start of the first element and comparing it to the end interval. That, so yeah, this is what we're doing. Like we just need to check if our um, interval exists between these range. So this is the first check and then this is the second check. So is our B start less than our um, A's end? Okay, so I hope this helps you understand the idea of how we calculate intervals. Now let's take this uh, perspective and apply it to our bigger picture here in this graph. 
Great, so we just saw how we uh, found this overlap here. Now, how do we calculate that and get our answer here as one and two, right? So what we need to do is we already know there's an overlap because we are checking the start of A and we're seeing if that is less than our end of B here. So if that's the case, we know that there is an overlap for sure in this range. Um, now, how do we calculate that this is the amount of overlap? How do we calculate that, right? So uh, what we do is we take our uh, maximum value from these first two starting positions. So what is the max of 0 and 1? The max is 1. So we take the max of that. And for the end, we need to take the minimum value because the maximum value is over here at 5. And that won't be the correct overlap if we give it 5. So we need to take the minimum value of the last two uh, points, right? So we need to take the minimum value of this point and we need to take c compare it to this. So the minimum of 2 and 5 is 2. So that's how we get a 2. All right, so now we can't just be staying here at the same spot. We need to check if there are other overlaps in our graph, right? So how do we how do we know when to move forward? So we can check if A's end is less than the B's end, right? So B's end is here. So if I can see that, oh, my first end point is, is done and my B's end point is further away, I know that my work for this overlap is done. This green overlap is done. There's um, nothing else to do here. So that's when I move my A pointer to look at the next position, the next overlap. So that's how, that's when we move from the first position to the second position. So now we're here in this second position um, in between 5 and 10. And our B pointer is still here in the first position. So what do we do now? We do the same thing. So we check if our um, 5 is less than or equal to 5, right? So we're comparing the first element in the A to our last element in the B. And yeah, 5 is equal to 5. So that's how they're getting this 5 and 5 value. And our second case still holds true, where we check if our B's first element is less than our A's end, right? So that's true. That's why we can say, yeah, so 5 is um, our next element that we need to put in our result array. So this is the result array we need to return. Um, so yeah, this question actually asks you to find um, these overlaps as well, where there is the same number. So we need to consider this 5 and also put this in our result array, so 5 and 5. And once we have that 5, we can tell that, okay, A's end so we need, we're checking this A's end again. So B is still here and we're checking the A's end. Now A's end is greater than um, B's end, which is still at five here, right? So this is when we know, okay, well, our work with B is done because we've covered all the possible overlaps we can cover. So there is one here and then there is one here at the five, right? So these two are already covered. So there's no more work to do here. And that's when we move the B's pointer forward in this position. Great, so we're looking at this range now between five and 10 and eight and 12. So we know that the overlap is between eight and 10, right? So this is our overlap. So again, how do we find our um, this value? So what we do is we take the maximum between 5 and 8 and the maximum is 8 so this is where our interval starts and from here what we do is we take our um, minimum between 10 and 12 so you see here 10 and 12 and the minimum is 10 so what we need to put in our results array is 8 and 10 okay now I want you to go through the rest of this on your own and um, solve it manually the same way we were doing here so that will help you understand um, the solution and help you manually move the pointers so you're able to see okay at what point does my interval end and start um, okay so I will go ahead and discuss the time and space complexity for this and then review our solution before we look at the code 
So the time complexity for this will be O of n, so we will only iterate over um, the array once. And the space complexity is going to be um, O of n if you consider the result array to be part of the space, but if you don't consider it to solve this problem, we don't really uh, have any auxiliary structures that we are using. So the space complexity will be O of 1 if we don't count the results array. Okay, so what, what do we need to do? So let's go over our um, steps in conclusion before looking at the code. So we want to find the overlap range. And how do we find that overlap range? We are going to see if A start, so I will say A start, is less than or equal to our B's end. And that's what we did here, right? So we saw between um, 0 and 5, right? So there exists an interval if A start is less than or equal to B's end and B start is less than or equal to A's end. Right, so we are just seeing if this B and and B start fall within the range of A. That's all we're checking here, right? So that's the condition to find the overlap. So this is the case we need to consider, and the second case is um, how we calculate the results. So we take the uh, maximum at the first position, so max of first position. Um, and then the min of the second position. So again, we looked at our example. So in the case of five and 10, we took our max here, right? So five and eight, we got eight is the max and the interval starts over here and it ends at the minimum between 10 and 12. So that's how we push the values. These are the values we need to push in our result array. And the last thing we need to do is move our pointer. So we move our pointer um, when we have a case where A's end is less than B's end. So here we saw that, okay, A's end is 10 and B's end is 12. That means I have already covered this um, green section of the uh, of the input array and found the overlap here so I have no more work to do and I'm gonna move on to the next position so that's what you need to check and if this is not the case then that means that um, the B has ended so that's when you need to move the B pointer so that's the third thing we need to do is move our pointers awesome so if this all makes sense we'll go ahead and write the code. Awesome, so I'm back in the code and what I've done here is I've just initialized the A pointer and the B pointer and this will keep track of how we move through um, the positions in the A list and the B list. So I've done that and I've also initialized my result array. So this is what we're going to return um, and push our values to. So what I wanna check is while uh, my A pointer is less than um, the length of my list A and the B pointer is less than my list length of my list B. So this is when I'm going to check because if we're at the end of the list that means we no longer need to um, keep moving our pointers because they will be out of bound. So that's why these are the conditions for the while loop. So to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to declare the start and end points for A. So if you remember, we're given, um, we're given the um, input like this. So we have our first start and our end positions here. So this is a sample of how we're given the data. So what we need to do is we just wanna grab this first position from the first part of the array. And the way we do that is 
we just say, okay, where does A start, right? So A, I'll just call it A start, so it's very easy to follow. So A start is my first um, element uh, in where my pointer is. So if my pointer is at this position, I need to grab the first element from this. So that's at zero index, right? So I'm gonna say A, A pointer, and at position zero. So this is just grabbing me the start and end position of um, the pointers. Great, so I just put all the values here and I'm able to grab the start and end pointers at um, each of the list A and list B. So after I have that, what I need to check is if there is an overlap. And this is the case we discussed in our solution. So we need to check if A start is less than equal to B end and B star is less than equal to A end. So this is how we find if the overlap exists. So if B end is existing, so if B start and B end exist between um, A start and A end, that's what we're checking here. And if that is the case, then what we need to do is we need to calculate what values to put in our result array. So we will say result.append and we will put um, in the first position, remember we need to take the maximum value that we can find in the overlap. So we will put uh, take the max of my A start and B start. And then in the next position, we need to put the minimum of our A end and B end. So that's all we're going to do here. Oh, B end, okay. So that's how we're populating the result array. And after we're done that, all we need to do is just move our pointer. So we're gonna check is if A end is less than B end, So that means A has already ended and B is still ongoing. So there is no more work to do in that um, interval for A because A's end is already done, right? So after we've done that, what we can do is we say A pointer, just move the pointer forward. So A pointer plus equals one, okay? Else, what we need to do is if B's end is less than A's end, that means B has already ended and there's no more work for B to be done over there um, because its interval has already ended, right? So we just need to move the B pointer forward. So we'll say B pointer plus equal one. And what we need to do after this is just go ahead and return our result. So we'll say return res. Okay, so let's make sure there's no typos. Okay, so run code. Okay, awesome. So yeah, that works. So let's go ahead and submit the solution. Awesome, accepted. Thanks guys. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. And if you have a different solution, please post it in the comments below. It could be in any other language. It's just going to help other people look at the solutions and understand and solve this problem themselves. Thanks, guys. Happy coding.